And we are back. I just watched episode eight of Rings of Power, the finale. <sighs> I, I don't, I'm not even, I'm trying to figure out where to begin. Is it the worst episode of the show? Probably not. But it makes previous episodes worse by making it clear that there's so much content that did not need to be there for this season. There were so many things in the previous episodes that were superfluous to the main plot of the story. The entire dwarven plot is kind of pointless because the elves end up doing their own thing anyway. I mean, it, it explains the, the little mithril that they have. But that did not need an entire season to explain. The entirety of Numenor like, was irrelevant. They, they, the army came, the army got blown up by a volcano, the army came back, and the king died in, in this episode. The, the, the actual plot of Numenor hasn't started yet, but we spent so much time with them anyway. Like The, the, the Numenor plot starts now, with the political machinations of the Chancellor and, and all that. That, that. That's definitely going to happen later. But that that's that sh that that part hasn't started yet. The Hardfoots is a story that works on its own, but is kind of made nonsensical by being beside everything else. It's like why why are we following them? Is is so blatant? Is so unclear because they're so irrelevant to the rest of the story. I I don't actually mind a lot of the stuff in it. I know that there are a lot of people who aren't a fan of them, but I I don't mind them too much. They have a bunch of silly scenes, but I think that it's one of the few plots that worked as a story. There's this girl who finds this this entity that's that's a mystery and is dangerous. The people don't like the people are wary of him, but he manages to do to befriend them and become and and learn about himself. He goes off. They help him out. Like it, it's there's a lot of problems with it, but it functions as a story. The wizard fights were okay. There was some very silly dialogue. Did you return? He is not Sauron. He is the other. I'm good. I'm not trying to be mean, or and I, I don't really want to call people out, but that the actress that plays one of those like servants of Sauron, she I, I think she wins the award for worst actress in the show. Her dialogue wasn't great, but her delivery makes it terrible. The more your powers awaken the more the veil will weaken. Everything out of her mouth just is it, almost... <laughs> I like, I like it, it's hard to listen to. Very, very strange performance. The main like antagonist of that trio uh, had had a stage presence that was intimidating. That was fine. That scene was good. There was, that, that whole story was all right. I, I, I think it's probably partially because it's so far removed from... Tolkien and and that it's just it, it feels like its own thing it always feels like a bit like Willow I, I I get a lot of Willow vibes from it it's certainly not Tolkien vibes but it it has a ch its own charm it, it did have another one yet again they, they love to reference the Peter Jackson films but the air doesn't smell so foul down here if you die to the air no always follow your nose there's a sweet smell on the air this way. When in doubt, Eleanor Brandyfoot. Always follow your nose. Is this supposed to mean that he's Gandalf? I, I guess so, but the fact that they're going east implies he's one of the blue wizards that <laughs> go to the east and are never seen again. I hope he's one of the blue wizards because that allows them to kind of go in their own direction and not I, do... And I think if it's Gandalf, that will be a lot worse. I, I, I really hope it's not Gandalf. Galadriel goes to the elf city and Howlbrand gets healed with elf medicine. He needs elfish medicine. He meets Celebrimbor. I have been waiting for the Sauron Celebrimbor meeting this entire show because that, as I said at the beginning of this series, uh, what I was interested in when this show was announced and they said what time period they were doing it and i was like oh my goodness it will be Sauron and celebrimbor that's an awesome uh part of the history that is very juicy and really fun to explore 
And there's a lot of things, there, there's a lot of lack of certainty about their, about how much Celebrimbor knew or how much, there, there's so much to play there. So I was excited. It wasn't as bad as I feared, but it wasn't great. Uh, they rushed it for one. It looks like they realized they rushed it because season two, uh, as from what I understand, is going to focus on them a bit. Uh, good. That's what I want to see. I was questioning the actor who played Celebrimbor this whole show. I, I will retract that a little bit. I think the problem with him really is the costuming, the makeup, and the, the uh, hair styling. The actor, I think his actual performance, if I if I look past the, all of that, is kind of kind of works. I actually I, I didn't mind him in his performance. I think the actor has an earthy quality to him that I think would work for a great blacksmith if you temper it with like an ethereal quality to make him more elvish. I think really just was in the costuming with the with the the makeup department. I think they could have. I could. I think they could have made him work because his performance. I don't mind. I think him in Halbrad's uh, dynamic worked. Uh, if anyone was was uncertain about his identity, that doubt dies in that scene. Oh my gosh, which makes the whole attempting to uh, make the stranger seem like Sauron laughable because at that point, there there is no question about who Sauron is. They kind of wrote themselves into a corner because a blacksmithing discussion between the second greatest elvish blacksmith of all time and the highest servant of the blacksmithing archangel is a conversation that us mortals shouldn't really understand. Them talking about blacksmith techniques and stuff, it, it almost, it felt too basic, I think for, I think a lot of people criticized it for feeling, sounding too basic, talking about alloys and stuff, and like, yeah, they they really are on a different playing field than us. Uh, they shouldn't. It shouldn't sound like that. But they, I I can see the problem where they, what what are they going to say? They they want blacksmithing lingo dialogue in here, and they, they kind of they, again they wrote themselves into a corner. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't as terrible as I feared, but it wasn't great. It did not feel. It needed to feel more mystical than it did, because they they it, they tried to make it kind of sciency sounding. I think might have been the wrong choice. <sighs> what is with the overall structure? The overall structure of the series. There, there's basically five episodes of waiting, uh, like like there there's of nothing to happen, and then six, seven, and eight things happen, and it's everything's crunched. It feels. I know they didn't. I they know it took like three months, but the way they block it makes it feel like the, these blacksmiths pulled an all-nighter and created the elven rings uh, like overnight. This is something that could have been in the background of an ent the entire season of like something that Calibrimbor is working on. Make it feel like an epic, long labor. But they don't. They kind of, they crunch it all at the end. And they didn't need to because so much of that filling time was so unnecessary. Just tons of unnecessary scenes, unnecessary characters, unnecessary dialogue. There's I mean, it just what what is this about? Uh, what the story? What it looks like it's about is season one is about the forging of the elvish rings, which is bizarre because that should not be first. Those are literally the set of rings that Sauron should not be involved in. That's like the, he should be involved in all the others, not that one. I know what they're doing is like, oh, he was he was away when those were made. I, I which I mean, he the whole thing is he shouldn't know about them. Feels. <laughs> I, I, I see what they're going with, but I, I'm not a fan of that uh, change. <sighs> Especially since it seems like it's almost like they're, they did things out of order and they're like, oh, we, we still need Sauron there. So he's going to come as a different character. At least I, I think that's what's happening in season two. I haven't seen season two yet. But it's about the forging of the Elvish Rings. That's what, the, what season one's about, right? When you break down the story, there's just, ev there's just plots that go nowhere. And, and nothing feels cohesive if this feels like a first draft I, I i this doesn't feel like it's been edited doesn't feel like it's been polished did galadriel and and elrond just fig so galadriel found out that he's sauron and is she just not going to tell Celebrimbor? is that what is that what we're playing with she's just like not gonna tell anyone and is elrond in on that 
okay. And uh, I'm avoiding the elephant in the room, which is the offer to make Galadriel a queen, which feels almost like a marriage proposal the way it's done. Them having a talk in like her mind, I like that. I'm always a sucker for that. That the, the choice to do like a mind palace thing. Personally, I always love that. I, I I'm I'm very weak to that sort of uh, storytelling. The actual content of that mind conversation is absurd. That I I I started laughing hysterically, hysterically. I, I because I, this show cost a billion dollars thousands of people worked on it this had to go through several like different board meetings different writers had to look at it different directors had to look at different different actors had to look at no point did someone say maybe we shouldn't publish someone's sauron galadriel fanfic this whole thing reads as a as a fanfic and that, that's that's the feeling that you get when you're watching this entire show it, it, it does feel like something that one would read on AO3. Except when you read something on AO3, it's free. It, 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 that, that was not a good choice. It was not a good choice. And I don't understand. Like they did they think that people would be would, would be like, yeah, that, that's great. Sauron and Galadriel? Oh, like what did they, what a reaction were we supposed to have? Like what were they thinking? When people looked at this script and were like, okay. So Sauron, like, like, no, no, it, it doesn't feel professional. The show, whole show, weirdly, does not feel professional. Uh, that's that. That's my read on that. There's a bunch of writing errors that should not exist at this level of production. There's a lot of acting errors that should not exist on this level of production. There's dialogue choices that should not exist. There's cinematography choices that shouldn't exist. There is set design, costuming choices shouldn't exist at this level this is one of my schlocky fantasy b movies uh then i would cut it a lot of slack but but it's not this is not this is not curse of the dragon slayer this, this is this is this is not that this is this is a billion dollar production with that that dared to put tolkien's name on it we do hold you to higher standards when you do that you, we do we do so were there things that I liked? Yes. There, there, are th there are ideas there that I enjoyed. There are some scenes that are that I enjoy. But I, d was it a good a Tolkien adaptation? No. Was it a good show? No. But there are people who like it. I want to make it very clear that there's nothing wrong with liking it. I, I, I like schlocky fantasy B-movies. I watch them all the time. They're very fun. So I don't see a problem with liking it, if you like it. The whole reason I got into this was I, I met a friend at work that got into the Silmarillion through Rings of Power. And I think that's wonderful. And that made me rethink about my stance on it, this show that I at the time had not finished and did not intend to at the time to finish. And I revisit, I did this whole thing. I revisited this whole series because I wanted to try to see her perspective and try to give it a fair assessment seeing as it really did improve my life it made i mean i have all these conversations about the silmarillion at work now which is lovely that's like a, it's a highlight of my day and rings of power did that it did that for me so even though i dislike it i think i think it it's amateurish writing and i think it's does not really deserve to have tolkien's name anywhere near it despite that i I don't hate it with with a with a violent passion because it did good things in my life uh, indirectly. <laughs> I think it is very valid to hate it with a like violent passion. I think it's very valid to like it. I'll never disrespect people for either of those opinions. I love hearing your opinions in the comments, and you ha you guys comment a lot. I I'm blown away, and I'm delighted by the depth of opinion. I'm a pretty moderate person compared to the range of opinions which i guess both angers and uh fascinates uh the very passionate ends of the spectrum but i love 
your comments. And I love that you guys have so many different opinions and are able to communicate in the comment section. I'm, I'm delighted that it's not an echo chamber, that there's a lot of different thoughts and you guys get to argue in the comments and debate each other and see and witness each other. Because I think a lot of times in the internet, we go to the same corners where like-minded people are, and we sometimes forget that other opinions exist. And it is always nice to have a space where it's so obvious that people think differently. And I think that's beautiful. I love, I love seeing all the different opinions. I am delighted at the, the <laughs> sheer breadth of range of uh, disagreement with things that I say. I, some of you say I'm I'm too soft. Some of you say I'm too harsh. It's uh, it's a very Goldilocks situation, but I I love that. I love it. I think that it's beautiful that you guys are all talking to each other. I'm kind of blown away by that reaction, and I'm very happy to to read and hear it. I don't mind the disagreements. And, and for the most part, you all have been very respectful, not necessarily of the show, but respectful of me. And I deeply appreciate that respect. And I will always return it to all of you, uh, regardless of our disagreements. Opinions are opinions. But this one's mine. I, I, I don't like it. I'm going to watch F season two because I know my friend is going to watch season two. And I no talking about it, it with her at work will be infinitely more enjoyable than the show is going to be for me. So I'm now season two is started and I'll get to watch it and you guys will get to watch me watch it. Uh, so I'll see you then. Did, did we just make her a builder just so that she could be in the room when the the king is doing this thing. I, I'm like, what was the builder subplot for? It was it just so she'd have a be able sketching his picture when the, there's so many. Why does she need to be there in the first place? Why does she need to see the vision? Because touching the okay, whatever.